Today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the media mistakes some of you guys have made recently. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm really excited to share this video with you guys because I asked on my Facebook page, Man Made Mead Makers, the group, um, what are some mead mistakes you guys have made recently? Um, and I think it's important that we learn from each other. In my podcast, What's New with Mead, I uh, often, or I will always share a mead mistake of my own, and I figured, what are some things that you guys are doing? Maybe you have made a mead mistake earlier, or before, and you're willing to share. So here's some mistakes from those people. I would love to hear your mistakes down below too, because I think we all do them, whether it's something small or big, I would love to hear it. And I think it's just good for us to learn from each other. So let's go through this together. Let's start with um, this. The first one is from Ron Bass. He says, I used coconut milk. It was a dirty moment. Um, you know, when you make a mead, you can kind of try whatever you want. I actually want to try making a coconut milk mead. Uh, I've never done it before, so I'd be curious to see if you've done it before for one thing, but also what he would say are some of the characters, what are the, some of the things you get from that mead that maybe made it not so great. Um, and someone asked that before, or down there. Christian Schneller overpressurized a torpedo keg and when I hooked it up the tap uh, hooked up the tap it started spraying everywhere um, I've never had an experience with the kegging side of things because honestly I haven't kegged something before I've just done bottle carbonation but I can only imagine that being not so fun I've definitely had um, a couple of moments where I put too much sugar in something and open the bottle and it goes crazy but never any dealing with a keg maybe you've dealt with that before uh, Frank he says, uh, started last year with mead making, sulfite and uh, sorbate stabilize. Um, oh, he, <laughs> this is funny. Then I, he, uh, I went and did some reading and, and it all should be good. Then I found out the, the electric scale I, I used was not measuring right. In all my batches, I added 10 times too much sulfite. Took me days of splashing and stirring, freaking out, but uh, it seems to do the trick. Uh, that's a lot of sulfite and um, it definitely will affect your flavor of your mead. Uh, make sure if you have a scale you're on the right settings for one and you're following what it says, teaspoons, tablespoons, whatever it says for your um, nutrients. But that sounds pretty pretty fun. Christopher Fuller, I bottled alone with a wide mouth carboy, slipped and broke on the floor. My first loss thankfully I had already bottled most of it, still sad. Yeah, I've, um, I've had a couple moments where I haven't dropped a glass carboy or anything yet, but I have definitely been filling a bottle and then like looking at my phone and not paying attention. And the next thing I know, I look over and I've got mead all over the table because I hadn't moved over to the next bottle. So that's definitely something. Um, Michelle Gordon. Uh, I don't know what I do wrong, but I make a lot of horrible mead. It tastes like jet fuel. Age doesn't seem to help much either. Um, I think the big thing with that is if you're making high ABV meads, you're probably gonna be making something that is has a lot of burn. And that's where that jet fuel idea comes into play. If you're making something and you're going, you know, hey, this is not tasting great. Well, it's probably because it's high ABV. Do those things get better over time? Absolutely. Um, every mead I've made that is like 14 to 18% has taken at least six months to mellow out and be the comfortable tasting thing that I want. Um, most of the time when they finish fermenting immediately, they are like, they're just not good. So that's that's totally fair. I've got some people on here that have replied, but I'm not gonna go through those right now. Jeffrey Johnson, he said, made a habanero pineapple mead a decade ago. I chopped um, the habanero and put it directly into the primary, not in the bag. It's still too hot to drink. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think if you put too much pepper taste into a mead, more than likely what you're going to find is that um, that flavor in the beginning is going to be strong. If you let it age for a long time, that flavor will actually mellow out. Uh, it just takes a long time. So make sure if you put a pepper into your mead, you're actually taste testing over time, like over, you know, a, re a close time to when you put it in to see how strong of that flavor you want. Don't go too far with it because then you can't really make it drinkable for you. 
Um, Carlos, uh, he says, not degassed before adding nutrients with little headspace. Five gallons became three gallons real quick. Mead volcano, clean, sticky mead off of everything. I've done that before. I've actually had to clean up this thing many a times because um, I've opened it up to, or opened up a mead to uh, degas it and just been stupid and not thought about it and it foams up. Next thing you know, you gotta mop the floor. So I've been there. I think everyone at this point has dealt with something like that. Sean, um, I'm not saying lots of last names because I probably will butcher them, so I'm sorry. My first pasteurize, I left the heat on with the bottles in the pot. I knew the temperature I needed. That's it. All, the, all of my uh, bottle corks flew out and lost one quarter of each bottle. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. You, anytime you make something with heat, bouches, pasteuriz, uh, pasteurizing a mead, um, even just heating your water for things, make sure you just watch it. Everything in brewing is like watching like a hawk. You can't ever look away because you might miss that one moment where things go crazy, especially with that. Um, Zachary Jesko, I stirred with a metal spoon in a glass jar. That's the last time I'll ever do that. Yeah, don't get too crazy. You'll definitely shatter some glass, um, especially if it's really thin glass. Nathan, um, I'm gonna butcher your last name, sorry. Uh, bottling a mead uh, that was not fully stabilized. Nobody likes a gusher. Yeah, you can bottle something that's not stabilized as long as um, they're, it's only doing like a little bit of carbonation. If there's a ton of carbonation that's gonna occur because of the honey or sugar added, then yeah, you're gonna have explosive things. Darren, he says, way too much honeysuckle. Um, never used honeysuckle, so I'd be curious to see how that tastes. Maybe it's good, I don't know. I've never done it before. Uh, Michael Caperso says, using bread yeast. Um, and then Morgan says, I've had good luck with bread yeast. Uh, used it several times to restart stuck fermentation. I've never seen, that's, that's interesting to me. I would not equate restarting a stuck fermentation to bread yeast. I would use something like a champagne yeast, like a, a Lalvin EC1118 that goes up to 18%. That normally kicks it, gets it going. I'm not the biggest fan of using bread yeast, but can you make a good mead with it? Yeah, the Joe's Ancient Orange Mead uh, base recipe calls for bread yeast. Can you make a good mead with it? Yeah, absolutely. I just haven't had a lot of good experience with it. Jake, he says, well, seeing as I started my first batch, my biggest mistake was not starting sooner. Um, yeah, I definitely start now. If you haven't made a mead yet, then do it. Devin, he says, rinsed out star sand for the first time. I racked a mead and accidentally made honey vinegar. Um, I don't think it's bad. Star sand is food safe. So I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but normally star sand you can use and it be food safe. As long as you're not just dumping like star sand into an open mead, that's probably where that would go bad. And then Matthew says, brewing in a beer fermenter, not cleaning it well enough, had layers of green sludge and bubbles within a week. Yeah, I would say that you, uh, sanitation is by far the most important thing you can ever do when making a mead. If you're making a mead um, and you're not sanitizing, you're probably gonna make something that's not great. So uh, these are some mistakes that people, people have made too. And I, I've made these mistakes, um, not all of them, but I've made some of these mistakes. And uh, I think if I had a, a keg, a kegging operation and those things, I would have more experience with that and probably have made some of the same mistakes. Hopefully you've learned something about mead making today because I think it's important that we all learn from each other um, I want to teach you everything I know that I can, but I don't know everything. And um, especially I've not experienced everything. So you might have more experience than me. So thank you guys for sharing those things. If you want to be a part of the group that talks about mead making more, you can find us on Facebook. There's the Facebook page for me, which is man-made mead, uh, man-made meadery, I should say. And then there's a subgroup in there called Man Made Mead Makers. If you have any questions, please do not post it on the Man Made Meadery page because that's not exactly, when you post there, it's not totally public. I have to do some things and really I only see it. So if you get onto Man Made Mead Makers, um, you can publish your, your questions, we get to respond. It's a cool thing. The big thing is when you join, you have to answer a couple questions. I don't, 
I don't, I'm the one who, who uh, fields who can come in just to make sure that there's no um, bots or anything. I've had a couple people, a couple instances of, of uh, bots coming in to advertise various things. So I always field those. I don't really let anybody in that hasn't answered it, the questions. They're really simple questions. So make sure you do that if you want to join us. And uh, I'd love to have you. So those are some questions. Thank you to those people. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope you will leave a comment down below letting me know maybe some of the mean mistakes you've made um, or things to watch out for all of us. I'll do this again in the future. Maybe we'll have some new mistakes. I'll definitely have some new mistakes to share with you guys because I make them all the time. So have a great day. Check out everything down below to support the channel and cheers.